Attorney General Merrick Garland says he will not be intimidated, and that's why he's been slamming those conspiracy theories about Trump's criminal cases. He's on Capitol Hill defending the Justice Department and federal law enforcement, and he had this warning for House Republicans. I will not be intimidated, and the Justice Department will not be intimidated. We will continue to our, do our jobs free from political influence, and we will not back down from defending democracy. Free from political influence. Uh, Jay O'Brien, we know politics. Uh, that's hard to do. But Garland did call out House Republicans saying they're just putting dangerous narratives out there. So let's talk about what exactly these lawmakers want to accomplish here. Well, if you had thought about this hearing even a week ago in the lead up, you would have said that this hearing would primarily focus on Attorney General Garland's refusal to hand over an audio recording of an interview that President Biden did with the special counsel who was investigating his handling of classified documents. That's what House Republicans want to hold Garland in contempt of Congress for. But this obviously now comes days after that criminal conviction of former President Trump. And that took up a lot of the oxygen in these proceedings, which, by the way, are still ongoing. Matt Gates got the first question, and Jim Jordan, who runs this committee, ceded his time to Gates, and it was Gates who served as the committee's de facto pit bull, pressing Garland on what Garland says are conspiracy theories, and that there's no evidence of any kind of connection between the Department of Justice and this local prosecutor over which the Department of Justice has no power in New York, who was presiding over, obviously, this case focusing on former President Trump. Here's a little bit of one of those exchanges between Garland and Gates gates that is somewhat demonstrative of what the entire hearing looked like. Did you ever have a family member profit off of the notoriety of any case that you sat over? Say again, you're asking Yes or no? Me, you're asking me to comment on a case currently. Well, it seems you're connecting the dots, point. Mr. Attorney General. I'm just asking you as to a general principle, but you are aware that Judge Mershon's daughter was profiting off of this prosecution. You are aware that that creates the appearance of impropriety. You know the very reason there's a federal rule against judges giving donations is because it is the very attack on the judicial process that we're concerned about. I'm sorry, I don't agree with anything you just said. That exchange, a sign of what the entire hearing looked like, Garland calling those attacks on, or, or rather those criticisms, saying the DOJ is in some way linked to a prosecutor's office over which they have no power, quote, an attack on the judicial process itself, Kira. So, Jay, what do you think about the timing of this hearing? It's coming right after Trump was convicted on 34 felony counts, and Joe Biden's son, Hunter, is standing trial on federal gun charges. Well, this was a hearing that House Republicans say they wanted to have for quite some time. And again, it was expected to focus, and it did still focus on that notion of holding Attorney General Garland in contempt of Congress. But I can tell you that House Republicans will acknowledge to you privately they don't have the votes right now to hold Garland in contempt of Congress. So that was expected to be one of the points of this hearing that got the most attention is House Republicans trying to make the sell, frankly, to some of their own members saying that because Garland has chosen to withhold this audio recording because he believes if it would be released, it would discourage people from participating in future federal investigations. Because of that decision, Garland should be held in contempt of Congress. But to your point, the timing of this hearing coming days after that Trump conviction, that's what sucked up a lot of the oxygen in the room, talking about what Republicans say is a weaponized Department of Justice against the former president and what Attorney General Garland says there is no evidence of. And that that mere accusation creates an infection in the rule of law that is, uh, frankly, dangerous to career DOJ officials. Jay O'Brien on the Hill for us. Jay, thanks.